if you're looking to level up your Power BI game, you need to learn how to work with parameters. In this demo, I'll introduce numeric range and fields parameters and show you exactly how you can use them to add custom, interactive elements to your Power BI reports. So in Power BI, parameters allow you to create new variables, which can be referenced in measures or controlled via slicers. Now, if you head to the modeling tab, you'll see a new parameter option with two types of parameters available. First, you've got numeric range parameters. These are typically used for things like scenario testing, where users can adjust numerical inputs to see the impact on a given output. So for instance, if we change the cost of goods sold or change the retail price or discount amount, how would that impact a calculated output like revenue or profit? You also have something called fields parameters. And these are commonly used to allow users to dynamically change the metrics or dimensions displayed in a given report visual. So both of these are really handy ways to add some advanced interactivity and make your reports a bit more dynamic. So let's drill into numeric range parameters in a bit more depth here. So when you create a numeric parameter, what's interesting is that Power BI automatically generates two new measures in the background one measure to define the parameter itself, and another to capture the selected value. So in this example we're looking at here, we've created a numeric range parameter called price adjustment percentage. It has a minimum value of negative one, maximum of one, with increments of 0 0.1 and a default value of zero. So Power BI has taken those inputs and converted it into code. So you see that generate series measure, which includes arguments for the minimum, maximum, and increment and then the selected value measure that actually captures or harvests whatever value is currently selected for that parameter with a default of zero. So this is fantastic because Power BI is essentially doing all the hard work for us. It's doing the heavy DAX lifting and it's giving users a much more intuitive and user-friendly way to create these types of really powerful parameters. So here's an example here. We've created that price adjustment percentage measure. We can add that as a slicer on our report page and then create or modify our measures to calculate things like adjusted profit, which is tied to the actual parameter value. Now users can simply interact with that slicer and see how changes to product prices would impact the company's bottom line profits. So let's jump into our VentureWorks report and see if we can create a numeric range parameter just like this one we see here. All right, so head to the product detail tab. We're gonna try to create that price adjustment percentage parameter. So we'll head to modeling new parameter. We're going to choose numeric range for this one. And we're going to go ahead and start by naming it. Let's call it price adjustment percentage. This is going to be a decimal number. And just like we saw in the slide, we're going to set a minimum to negative one, a maximum of one with increments of 0 0.1 and a default of zero. That's going to allow me to create a slider or slicer with a range from negative one to one that users can control in 10% or 0.1 increments, because I'd like to see how increasing or decreasing our prices by 10% or 20% or 30% might impact other calculated measures in our model, like revenue or profit. And we do wanna add a slicer so we can keep this box checked and click create. All right, so Power BI has automatically dropped that new slicer onto the page. And check this out, if we head to our data view, we have a new table that's been created called price adjustment percentage, the name of my parameter. And inside I have those two automatically generated DAX measures. The first one defining the parameter using generate series, and the second to actually capture the selected value. And I'll be able to use this price adjustment value field as an input to other measures in just a bit. So let's start with a little bit of formatting. Let's put it into place. What I'm going to do is resize my area chart here to make room for our slider. And let's go ahead and format that slicer a little bit just to customize the visual look and feel. So for header, let's be consistent with our fonts. Use Seago UI, size 10. That looks good to me. And then in our slicer settings, We've got single value, which I think should work quite well. So let's see how this looks. We've got zero in the middle, We've got increments of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, up to a maximum of one, and a minimum of negative one. 
So that looks right to me. Let's go ahead and just place it at zero by default and bump this visual down slightly. And I think that should just about do it. So our parameter is created, the DAX measures have been generated, the slicers here on our page, but it doesn't do anything yet because the value from that parameter is not tied into any other calculation in my model. So what we need to do here, and this is kind of the tricky part, is create new measures that take the selected value from this parameter and allow us to calculate things like the adjusted price, the adjusted revenue, and ultimately the adjusted profit, which we can visualize here on our area chart. So let's walk through those steps and add those three measures together. I'm gonna to select my measure table, add a new measure, and the first one I wanna create is the adjusted price. So let's go ahead and type adjusted price equals, and what that's gonna be is our existing kind of average retail price that we've already created times the selected value from our parameter slicer. But remember that price adjustment parameter is in increments of 0.1 from negative one to one. So a parameter value of 0.1 means I'm increasing the existing average retail price by 10%. So to capture that, I'm gonna multiply the existing price by one plus whatever value has been selected from my parameter, which remember Power BI has already built for me and it lives right here, price adjustment value. So let's go ahead and click that into place, add some spacing just to be consistent for readability. And we should be able to close off that measure and press enter. So that's gonna be our adjusted price based on whatever value has been selected using the slicer. Now that we have the adjusted price, we can come up with an adjusted revenue measure using the existing revenue measure as a starting point. So let's find total revenue. There we go, we used a sumx function here. I'm gonna copy all of this DAX and I'm going to just create a new measure again in our measure table. I'm gonna paste that DAX, and this is gonna be called adjusted revenue. And the initial arguments are gonna be unchanged. We wanna take the order quantity column from the sales data table, and we wanna multiply it not by the product price using related, but by the adjusted price that we just created. Adjusted price, close the parenthesis, and that should give us an adjusted measure for revenue. Press enter to lock that one in. Oops, we've got an extra parenthesis there. Press enter, there we go. And then the third measure that we need is adjusted profit. So if we look at our existing profit, we'll see that it's as simple as total revenue minus total cost. Let's go ahead and copy that DAX, add a new measure, paste it here, and we're gonna call this one adjusted profit. And the only thing that needs to change is that now instead of our default total revenue measure here, we're gonna take our adjusted revenue and subtract total cost. That will give us our adjusted profit. Press enter to lock that one in as well. And the hard part's over. We've created those three new calculated measures that are based on the selected value in our parameter slicer. So last step is to actually visualize some of those new measures we created. And to do that, I'm gonna edit this area chart that we created showing profit trending. And let's actually convert this back to a line because I'm gonna add a second series here. And instead of just total profit on our y-axis, we're now gonna add adjusted profit as well. And you can see that it's overlaid it exactly on the same line, which makes sense because our parameter value is set to the default of zero right now. So we should see the same totals, which is a good sign. So let's do a little bit of formatting here on the chart. You can go ahead and turn off the title. Now that we have this legend in the top left, this is telling users exactly what they're looking at. I think that works quite well. Only other adjustment I'd like to make here is with our lines and markers. So for lines, let's change our colors. Let's make the adjusted profit that bright blue and the original total profit can stay that dark gray by default. And let's go ahead and add markers here as well. Those are a little bit big, so I think a size three should do pretty well. So I believe that's all I really care to do for formatting at this point. Now it's the moment of truth to actually test this thing. So if we were to increase our pricing by 
now we see these two lines diverge. We see that adjusted profit starting to go up based on those new measures we defined. And in our tooltip, you can see we automatically have both our total profit and adjusted profit values shown right here as well. Looks like we could do a little formatting on that adjusted profit measure, but overall this is looking great. Let's check 20%. Let's see if we dropped prices by 50%. See profit drops very, very drastically. So there you go, numeric range parameters, such a great way to add scenario tests or what if analysis to your Power BI reports and dashboards. So we've talked about numeric range parameters. Now let's take a minute to dig into fields parameters. When you create a fields parameter, just like a numeric range parameter, Power BI automatically generates some DAX behind the scenes. It's gonna add a new report slicer to the page and generate a new measure that looks something like this. And that's designed to capture the selected value. So in the example we're looking at here, we've created a new fields parameter called metric selection containing five different measures from our model, total orders, revenue, profit returns, and return rate. Then what we've done is added that as a slicer on our report page and to the y-axis of our chart, which essentially lets users dynamically change which metric is shown in the visual. Pretty straightforward, but a really nice way to make your charts and graphs a bit more dynamic. So let's go ahead and jump into Power BI and try to create a fields parameter like this for ourselves. So go ahead and jump into your product detail report and let's go to modeling parameter and add a fields parameter this time. And let's go ahead and call this product metric selection. And now all we need to do is select fields. It's kind of pulling in our data view right here, which is really helpful. And all we're gonna do is pull in the measures that we want to be included in this slicer or parameter. So let's do total orders, let's do total revenue, let's do total profit, total returns, and return rate as well. Simple as checking the box, and we've got our list of parameter fields. Much simpler than numeric range parameters, this is literally all it takes. And yes, we wanna add a slicer to the page, so let's go ahead and click Create. And there we go, it's dropped a slicer onto our report page containing those five fields that we've chosen. As always, do a little bit of formatting here just to make sure it's consistent. I think vertical list style looks good. Let's activate single select here instead of multi-select because we really only want people to view one metric at a time on this chart. And we can do some formatting on the slicer header. Let's use our consistent Sego UI size 10 and we'll change our values as well. Size 10 looks good, and that should just about do it. So now we'll do some resizing, and we're gonna resize our area chart like so to make room, and drag this down. All right, so that's step one, right? We've got our fields parameter, we've got our slicer, we can select any of these fields or these metrics that we've configured, but at this point, it's not doing anything because it's not connected to any visual or measure in our model. So just like with our numeric range, we can head to the data view here, and we should see a brand new table, product metric selection, with a new DAX measure that captures the input from our parameter settings. So you can see we've got our five metrics listed here. We could rename these if we wanted to. In fact, let's kind of do that. Let's simplify this to orders, revenue, profit, returns, and maybe return rate with a percentage, just to kind of make things a little bit more concise and show that you can relabel these different selections. So now we press enter, should see that slicer update accordingly. That looks good. And now really the last thing that we need to do is update our chart Y axis. Instead of just showing total returns as a single metric, we're gonna add data and grab that new DAX that was produced by our parameter, this product metric selection measure. Drag that in, and now watch this. I've got order selected, now returns, profit, revenue, return rate. Our chart is now dynamic, and it's tied to this selection sourced by our parameter. Now, because we have this slicer, I think we can get rid of our chart title now. Let's go into our format pane, turn that title off, and one thing that's really cool is that we can now format the chart 
for each of these five selections specifically. So let's go ahead and start with orders. Let's select our chart here. And if we scroll down to the lines option here, we've got order selected right now. So we can format that kind of our default gray. And then go ahead to our slicer, make the selection, change the color here. Let's do the same for profit. I think for all of these kind of good metrics, I'm going to use the same gray. And then for two bad metrics, return and return rate, let's use that red that we're used to. There we go, and return rate. I think that should do it. So let's go ahead and test this out. Orders is gray, revenue, profit, returns, and return rate. That's all looking good. Such a simple but impactful way to add that next level of interactivity to the visuals in your reports. Now, if you're excited to learn more and build job-ready skills, check out our best-selling Power BI desktop course or dive into our specialist path which covers desktop, service, advanced DAX, PL300 certification, and more. You can also explore our entire suite of self-paced courses, guided projects, and portfolio tools, and create your own personalized learning plan for free. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, make sure to like and subscribe for more data content just like this. I'll see you in the next one.